forsake the old parables. Number five, forsake the old practices. And number six, forsake the old places. And then number seven, you forsake the old principalities and powers. Number one, forsake who now? The old prophet. We're looking at First Kings chapter First Kings chapter thirteen. First Kings chapter thirteen, and I'm reading here from verse eleven. First Kings chapter thirteen. First Kings chapter thirteen. We're looking at verse eleven. Now there dwelt an old prophet in Bethel. And his sons came and told him all the works that the man of God had done that day in Bethel. And the words which he had spoken unto the king, them they told also unto their father. And eventually, you know what the old prophet did? He went after that man of God and then found him resting under a tree and said, Are you the man of God that came to a city? He said, Yes, I am. Why don't you come home with me? And then the man said, I cannot because the word of the Lord has told me this definitely. I cannot do that. I said, but I'm a prophet like you are. And the angel of God spoke to me and said, I must bring you back home so you can eat with me. And they went back. What happened to him later? What happened to him later? A lion killed him, slew him destroy this life he died prematurely that's what the lord is saying this is a new year forsake the old prophet number two forsake the old priest the old priest we're looking here now at uh, first samuel first samuel we're looking at first samuel chapter two first samuel chapter two i'm reading from verse 22 first samuel chapter two verse 22 now eli was very old and had all that his sons did unto, the, unto Israel, and how they lay with the women that assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Verse 29, Wherefore keep ye at my sacrifice and at my offering, which I have commanded in mine habitation, and honorest thy son above me to make yourselves part with the chiefest of all the offerings of Israel, my people, wherefore the Lord God of Israel said, I said indeed that thy house and the house of thy father should walk before me forever, but now the Lord said that be far from me. Forsake the old priest, that is the indulgent priest that will not rebuke sin, will not rebuke evil, but is corrupt, and then allows corruption just to go like that, forsake the old prophet, forsake the old priest, forsake the old passion. The old passion, Ezekiel chapter 25. Ezekiel chapter 25, I'm reading from verses 15 and 16. Ezekiel chapter 25, from verse 15. The says the Lord God, because the Philistines are dealt by revenge, and they are taking vengeance with a despiteful heart to destroy it for, for what? Tell me out loud. For the old hatred. Old hatred, not, not a new hatred. It's something that happened many years ago. Happened maybe last year. And they, and they still bottle that in. And I said, this old passion of hatred inside them. Forsake the old passion. And don't do anything because of the old hatred. You see somebody for the first time this year. And the person has not done anything wrong to you this year. And then you are angry. And you are frowning. And you are you know, speaking some loud words. I said, what's the matter with you? What's the problem? And you say, well, he did something last year. And the other time, I've not seen him this, that, since that time. And this time now to just get it on him. But I say, forsake the old passion. And don't do anything because of the old hatred. Look at verse 16. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will stretch out my hand upon the Philistines. I will cut off the children themes and destroy the remnant of the sea coast. Forsake the old prophet. Forsake the old priest. Forsake the old passion. Forsake the old 
parables. You know, all these people that sit at the moonlight, these old women's fables that they tell, and they give you some traditions and some ideas, and then some old proverbs, and they say this way and say this way, and they make us forget the word of God. Forsake all those old parables. In First Timothy chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 7. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. But refuse profane and old wise fables. They're not true. They're just suggestions. Sometimes it mixed with a dream, or with their revelation, or with their vision, or with their idea, or with their suggestion, or with the whatever it is they're thinking about. They might even turn it into a prophecy, but it's old women's fables, old wives' fables, old mothers' fables. And just all things they're dreaming of and conjuring from their mind, forsake them and live a righteous life, and the Lord will be with you in Jesus' name. Old practices number five. Old practices number five. What's number six? Old places. The old places we used to go, and then we just misuse our money. We used misuse our time. We misuse our lives. Forsake the old places. And then what's number seven? All principalities and powers, they will not touch you this year in Jesus' name. In First Corinthians chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 7. First Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. And it says, Push out therefore the old leaven, that she may be a new lamb, as ye are leaven, for even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Not with the old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness. Let that be an old thing, an old practice. And throw them away. Don't allow them to affect your life, to come into this new year. But with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Point number two. Perform the duties of the new man. Perform the duties of the new man. The Lord wants us to have a new heart. A new desire, a new spirit, a new disposition, a new character, a new behavior, a new conduct, a new lifestyle. In Ezekiel chapter 18, Ezekiel chapter 18, I'm reading from Basachi, Therefore I will judge you, o house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, says the Lord God. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so iniquity shall not be your ruin. Cast away from you all your transgressions, whereby ye have transgressed, and make you a new heart and a new spirit. Make you a new heart and a new spirit. Create a new heart and a new spirit. Bring up a new heart and a new spirit. How do you do that? By just saying, the old is gone, the new has come, and it's a new year, and I'm going to look and act and think and behave and walk and carry myself in a new way. I'm not going to speak the same old vocabulary, the same old word. I'm not going to allow the same old tongue to get control of my life. I'm not going to allow the old action to keep on emphasizing itself, affirming, asserting itself. Everything is going to be new. Make you a new heart and a new spirit. For why will ye die, O house of Israel? For start it you, for I have no pleasure. In the death of him that dieth, says the Lord God, wherefore turn yourselves and live ye. Let's look at Ezekiel chapter 36. Ezekiel chapter 36. And we're reading from verse 25. Ezekiel 36 verse 25. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you and ye shall be clean. The Lord will clean up our hearts. He will clean up our lives. All the guilt, the Lord will forgive. All the condemnation, the Lord will remove. And all the pressure, the Lord will take away. And our lives will become totally new in Jesus' name. Because the Lord said, I will. And when he says, I will, nothing can hinder him. He says, he'll wipe away all our sins of the past. Nothing evil, nothing sinful will be, will be remembered against you, against us anymore in Jesus' name. Then when I sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean. And from all your filthiness. How many kinds of filthiness? All. Private. Public. External. 
internal, from all your filthiness, and from all your idols will I cleanse you. Verse 26, in your heart also will I give you. Do you know that in your, in your heart is a gift? It's a gift that you come to me, Lord. You know, this uh, Christmas time and this new year, people are, you know, sending gifts one to another. And one of the greatest of gifts the Lord wants to send us is a new heart. Receive it in Jesus' name. A new heart also will I give you. And a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you. Amen. And cause you to walk in my statutes. And you shall keep my judgments and do them. We are going to do that in Jesus name. In Colossians chapter 3 verse 10. Colossians chapter 3. Reading from verse 10. Colossians chapter 3. And reading from verse 10. And I put on the new man. I put on the new man. Uh, you know, some, somebody can buy a new dress for you, but you still have to make the effort and put it on yourself. Somebody can give you something new, you have to make the effort, receive it, and make use of it yourself. And the Lord says that He gives us the characteristics of the new man, the new heart, and the new spirit, and a new life. And a new character is a gift. He gives it to us, but now we have to put it on ourselves. And it says, and I'll put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. We where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision or circumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond no free, but Christ is all and in all. It's available for you. And it's available for everyone. Verse 12, put on, therefore, put it on. It says, this is your responsibility, put it on. You know, I cannot force you to smile, you have to put on the smile. I cannot force you to open your Bible, I can, I can talk about the verse, I can declare the verse, I can mention the verse, and I can say open your Bible, but I cannot open it for you, but the Bible is there, do it yourself. And then all these good characteristics and good things, you have to put it on yourself. The preacher cannot put it on for you. The pastor cannot put it on for you. And your counselor cannot put it on. And cannot force you to do it. But it's you that will put on that new attitude. And new disposition. And new spirit. And new character. And new conduct. And a new life in this new year. And you are going to do it in Jesus name. Put on therefore as the elect of God. Holy and beloved powers of mercies and kindness. And humbleness of mind. Nobody can ever force you to be humble. They can, you know, we can talk about it, we can encourage you, we can read the Bible verses, can tell you the advantage of being humble. But nobody can put it on you by force and say, by force, whether you like or not, do or die, you must be humble. It's impossible. Even if they put, put a gun at your forehead and say, be humble, you can be afraid, but you'll not be humble. There will be something that will say, do what you want to do, shoot me if you want to, I'm still who I am. Nobody can put on humility in you, but you have to do it yourself. And it's so wonderful when you do it. You will do it in Jesus' name. That's why it says, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, and forgiving who? One another. If any man has a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfection and then of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. And let the word of Christ dwell in you. How? richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. And whatsoever, and whatsoever you do this new year, and whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all how? In the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God, and the Father by 
in second peter chapter one second peter chapter one put off the old and put on the new put off the old and put on the new second peter chapter one verse three according as his divine power has given unto us all things has given unto us how many things all things that pertain unto life and to godliness he has given to us already that's what i told you before take it put it on dress up in it and you see it every time in your life and it's not just calvary has paid it all and calvary has provided everything we need for salvation everything we need for sanctification everything we need for life and for godliness and it says through the knowledge of him that called you unto glory and to virtue whereby are given unto all succeeding great and precious promises that by this ye might be partakers of the divine nature will be partakers of the divine nature divine nature is the nature of love divine nature is the nature of gentleness divine nature is the nature of humility divine nature is the nature of righteousness divine nature is the nature of love and kindness and compassion and mercy it's not the nature of being boisterous and being aggressive and pushing other people down that's the nature of satan be careful this new year we're not going to manifest the nature of satan we're going to manifest the nature of god himself the nature that is gentle, that is meek, that is loving, that is kind, that is compassionate, that is merciful. And it says you now have the divine nature, partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that's in the world through loss. And beside all these, give all diligence, uh, give all you to add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge. Add to your faith virtue. Add it. Again, this is what you'll do by yourself. We'll preach about it, but you'll do it by yourself. Add virtue this year. Add knowledge in verse 6 and to knowledge temperance, self-control. Who can control your tongue for you? Only you can do that. Who can control members of your body for you? Only you can do that. Who can control your hands for you? Only you can do that. Who can control your feet where you walk to? Only you can do that. Who can control your mind? What you think about? Only you can do that. And it says you must put that on and add temperance to uh, to knowledge. And then it says unto temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness. And then it says in verse 7 to godliness, brotherly kindness, brotherly kindness, brotherly kindness. That's a Christian virtue to be kind. And to be thinking about every morning before you meet brother so and so, what can I do to be kind to him? Before you meet a sister so and so, what can I do to be kind to her? What does he think about kindness? And what does he judge as kindness? What will he interpret as kindness? What will she interpret as kindness? It is not what you think is kindness that will make him feel that you are kind. It is what he thinks is kindness that makes him feel that you are kind. You know, some people, I, I don't understand. I'm trying to be kind to brother so-and-so, and he never thinks I am kind. Because you think that thing is kindness, but that's not what he needs. Think about what he needs. And put yourself in other people's shoes and say, what does he think is kindness? What does she think is kindness? That thing he thinks is kindness, that's what, that's what you have to do. The word that he feels, that's kind. That's the word you speak. And the life he feels, my brother is kind to me today. That's what you do. It's not what you think is kindness. It is what he thinks is kindness. And he says to brother kindness, you add 